Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to cover something a little unusual, because if you were to field, say, a German armored car, a Russian anti-tank gun, a French mortar, and an American tank in one army, you're probably playing Chinese. Now Chinese involvement in World War II is something that I didn't know a great deal about, um, something which was missing from a great many of the histories that I have been reading in part because they were concerned mostly with the border between Japanese uh, territory and into Burma and India along those areas, which, you know, there just hasn't been a Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks miniseries on that yet. So, you know, it's something that I was actually really interested to pick up and learn a lot more about. Now, the actual history of it all is fascinating, and I thoroughly recommend there are two Osprey books, which I will... Uh, you know, make sure to link in the description. Now this method uses paints from a few different manufacturers, but it's worth pointing out early on that the actual colors don't matter a huge amount. If you've got something which you think looks right, it's probably close enough. The information that I'm using for these uniforms does come from the Osprey books as well as reenactors. And I know you can't always count 100% on reenactment groups to have perfect uniforms, but Chinese reenactment groups is probably as close as I'm going to get to authentic uniforms of the period. So this is kind of an amalgamation of a few different looks. The paints will be listed in the description below though, so let's get started. So to start off, I've primed this fella with skeleton bone from the Army Painter, but anything like this will work quite well. You could use wraith bone from Citadel, you could even use a white. Um, I'm using Skeleton Bone because it's got a little bit of a yellow tint to it, and that's going to quite help with some of the other covers that we're going to put on. Now, if you wanted to do the grey-blue uniform, you could prime it with, say, Uniform Grey or anything similar, really. But because I want to do the Southern uniform for these guys, this is what I'm using. Now, for the uniform itself, I've got here Green Ochre. This is the Vallejo color. Anything like this will work. You could use desert yellow, you could use brown sand, German camo orange ochre. <laughs> There's not really a correct answer. And that's because of the fact that the decentralized nature of Chinese production meant that while the cut of the uniforms is pretty much identical around the country, dye quality and color was variable, let's say. So I've got a medium dry brush here from the Army Painter. Anything with a sort of wedge tip will work quite well for this. I'm just going to go around the whole model. I'm not particularly fussed if I hit things like his hands or his rifle, because as always, we are going to paint that a different color later. Just don't forget that he has a hat. Now I've come back to give that a second coat afterwards so that we have a nice solid color. What I'm going to do now is actually dry brush the uniform to introduce a bit of depth and some shading. Now, you could highlight him later, um, and I'll show you what that looks like on another miniature. But for now, I've got one of my little makeup brushes that I'm going to use as a dry brush, and some dark sand from Vallejo. So we're going to scrub most of that out into a bit of kitchen towel. And as always, let's just quickly flick along the edge of the base to see what sort of stuff we're going to leave behind. You'll see that's nice and subtle there. So let's go along the whole miniature, and I want to try and dry brush cross areas of detail. So I'll pick up the edges of his sleeve and those uh, folds there and try not to hit the, the flatter areas. Now it's inevitable in some places that you are going to hit those, you know, like on his shoulder here, you're probably going to get a little bit of uh, dark sand stuck there. But if you do want a tidier look, you can come back and actually just go back with your original uniform color. Uh, whatever the case, I am going to now dry brush all this uniform and then move on. Now when I started applying this, I, I found that the more I put on, the better it looked. So I did do a little bit more than I thought I would. That's going to work really well for a sort of worn, sun-bleached uniform. And that'll look quite nice, I think. So we'll move on now and base coat his skin. There's not really a right way of doing this. I'm going to start with Cadian Flesh Tone from Citadel. Because this is a nice light primer, you'll find it covers very well, but you will probably need to do two coats in some areas. Now we're going to paint in a couple of leather details. 
Now, how much of this guy's equipment was leather would depend a little on how well equipped he was. For the most part, the belt around the waist would almost always be leather, but the shoulder straps would quite often be a khaki, you know, a cloth fabric instead. I'm going to paint this dude with leather shoulder straps because I think it looks cool. And I do want my guys to have access to some pretty neat kit, so I want to imply that they are fairly well equipped. So saddle brown here. Uh, you could use a darker brown if you wanted to use uh, flat brown or similar. There we go, there's that belt hiding from me. Uh, but whatever leather color you like, go ahead now, paint that on. Now these leg wraps might have been the same color as his uniform in some cases, but I like to do them a slightly different sort of khaki color because it stands out a little more. You want to add some visual interest here. Uh, I've got the army painter skeleton bone again, and this is because it covers fairly well over most colors. So just a quick pass around there. Now at the same time as his leg wraps, I've also done the strap for his hat across his chest with just a little of that skeleton bone. It's nice and quick. I've got here now Banshee Brown. This is another army painter color. And I'm going to paint in his hat with this. Now there's not really a right color for this. Uh, same as I keep saying for almost everything else. What you want is a light wicker sort of look. And Banshee Brown just does the job very nicely. Now while that's drying, we can flip them around. I've got here a color. This is Khaki Webbing. Now, this one here actually comes from Warlord Games. It's part of their rapid deployment system. Uh, it is an army painter paint. If you want an alternative, something like uh, medium gray or German camo beige from Vallejo will work quite well here. But Khaki Webbing, while well, it's nice and light and it's designed for pretty much how I'm going to finish painting this guy. You'll notice it does go on slightly lighter than uh, the beige brown from just before. So, so Banshee brown rather. So this we're going to paint in, funnily enough, what's left of the khaki stuff we need to do. So this bandolier, and I'll also paint in this little satchel on the side here with this. Now khaki webbing covers very well, sort of similar to how Banshee brown does. And now to confuse things, I'm going to use beige brown. And this is a Vallejo color. This is going to go on his rifle and any other wooden details that the miniature might have. Now while that dries, there is an absolutely vital area of detail we need to paint, and that is his socks. Uh, I, I joke, this is purely optional, but it will stand out and it's a neat little bit of sort of historical detail. These fellas who didn't have boots would quite commonly be wearing uh, white socks and black shoes. So you'll see I'm not terribly worried if I hit the shoe itself, because we're going to paint that black later. But these little socky bits at the front, we can just bop those over with a wee bit of white now. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's such a neat touch. Now, speaking of black shoes, we're going to paint the black details, starting with the shoes. <laughs> you can also paint in his rifle details at this stage. Uh, I do recommend have a look at what old Uncle Google has to say on the subject of Chinese rifles of the period. I found it super helpful. Now don't do what I always forget, and that is to paint in his hair. These guys without helmets, don't miss that detail. What we'll do now is actually shade him. This is all of the base coats done. And how you go about this is up to you. I've got here my little one-to-one -one mix of strong tone and uh, army painter quick shade mixing medium. But you can use pretty much anything you like, uh, Agrax Earthshade and Lamian Medium, whatever it is you've got access to. I do strongly recommend, though, thin it down with a little bit of medium. But you'll see, this has got all the brown gunk at the bottom here. And you'll see I've shaken it just a little bit to sort of start mixing it. But this being an acrylic product, let's give that a really good shake. And then once that is, as Elvis once said, all shook up, you'll have something that looks a little more like this. What I'm going to do is just pop a wee bit of this out onto my palette. And then, with a nice large brush, we can apply this generously over the entire miniature. So, don't be scared. Make sure that you are working it into any recesses. And we'll go around the whole miniature like this. So, let's jam this stuff on. Now, this will take about 20 to 30 minutes to dry. And then we can come back and get a look at what that looks like. Now, there will still be a slight shine to that once that's dried, but 
Not a problem, we're going to varnish later. I'm going to go ahead now and do just a couple of highlights, because you'll see the uniform itself, um, <laughs> that looks really cool. Uh, the dry brush, before we get to the shading, really adds a lot to the, to the shape of that. I've got just a little Kislev flesh, and I'm going to highlight his skin. Just a few little dots on the back of his knuckles. And we'll also paint in his cheekbones and the back of his ears, however you like to highlight this, really. Now, if you're feeling brave, you can also hit his top row of teeth with a little bit of the white that you might have used on his socks. Purely optional, but I think it does set that face off quite well. I've got here a little oily steel from Vallejo, and any sort of mid-tone gunmetal color will work well here. Just a little bit along the weapon, and now at this stage, I'm really just being fussy. I've got here some pale sand. We used dark sand earlier. But just a wee bit of this on my brush, I'm going to use to highlight the khaki webbing. At this point, you could really just stop. Um, I, <laughs> I'm just having fun here now. Now, I mentioned earlier, you could highlight the jacket sort of traditionally, let's say. And for that, over the top of the green ochre, I used, uh, what was it? Iraqi sand rather than dark sand. You'll see once the dry brush has been shaded, those two colors look fairly similar, but this fella's got a slightly tidier look to him. It's really up to what you like the look of. At any rate, I'm going to go ahead and pop this fella outside, give him a matte varnish spray, and then base him and see what he looks like. So there we have it, side by side, two examples of how we can paint Chinese infantry. Now, as you can see, the fella who was highlighted sort of traditionally does have a slightly more yellow, a smoother look to his jacket. But I kind of think the fella with the straw hat and the dry brush look works perfectly well too. Now, as mentioned, these are from Anzio Miniatures, which I will make sure to link in the description. They have an extremely comprehensive range, really, and the ability to add a sort of generic crew to whichever artillery piece you might want to field for, you know, your Chinese forces, that's a nice touch, so definitely worth checking them out if this is something which has caught your eye. So as always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who keep me ticking in paints and glue, including producers Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Fred, and Jimmy. Your support is invaluable, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.